Well, welcome to a bit of a talking point special and we're focusing today on, well, particularly families and children and screens. Uh, I think there's a growing awareness about the impact that screens are having, particularly on those in the, the teenage brackets. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff in the media at the minute yeah. um, about the impact on all sorts of areas of life. And you know, some of the, the stats you're hearing are pretty scary yeah. you know, coming out of the States. I think it was a Pew Research piece, you know, teenagers spend on average, on average five hours a day on social media alone. And that's outside school. That's outside of school. Where so they have access to screens too. Exactly. So, and I think people are starting to see the impact of that. But I think almost thinking about it at that stage is almost a bit too late. We want to be thinking about our younger children, mm. preschool, mm. early primary, and how we can help uh, parents. I know, Agnes, you've been thinking about this quite a lot, about how to help parents think these things through. Um, so why did you decide to get into this and think about this a bit more carefully? Why, why are we here today talking about this? Because I think, I think lots of parents realise that it's an area of concern. In one sense, handling how your kids use screens and devices um, is the same as all other aspects of parenting. But I do think screens um, and everything that comes with them, there's a sort of added element of almost addiction of habit forming. I think parents realise that. I think parents realise that in themselves. I certainly recognise that in myself. In myself. Mm. Um, I think people are, as you say, beginning to hear the stats and the impact on loneliness. I think, I think parents are aware of the harms in terms of sexual imagery mm -hmm. um, and, and all that. And just the sheer amount of time as you say, um, that devices can use up and it, it can be complicated, it can be really habit forming. So I thought it would be a good thing to get into with parents. I am, I'm, I'm by no means an expert on this area. I'm not even a parent. I mean, at least you're a parent, Paul, so that's great. And I've chatted uh, to a number of parents mm. and, and it was interesting when I, what I did was I basically found, found Christian books that were talking about this area and have read them to try and uh, regurgitate mm. some of that for folks. But it's really interesting that the books say the same sort of thing that actually parents, you know, a, a large proportion of parents when asked would say that they think the area of screens and devices makes parenting more complicated. Yeah. Um, but as Christians, you know, there's lots of great advice in the world. And I think, I think there is good stuff we read with discernment. But as Christians, we've got a worldview mm. that genuinely helps us to think through any area. Um, it gives us a, a firm place to stand um, when I think lots of parents are thinking it wasn't like this in my day. Yep. But actually, Scripture stands. The Word of God never goes out of date. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we've got, uh, you know, that worldview to stand on. So what would be, um, there's the sort of, there's the big picture worldview, um, answering key questions about what we're here for, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to thinking about screens in particular, yeah. what would be some of the key things in terms of worldview, Christian worldview that are helpful to, what are the kind of key planks yeah. to, to think I, about? I think an important thing to think is we know that God has given us the job of shaping and stewarding his creation and that technology of all kinds is part of that. Mm. And so since the dawn of time, um, uh, men and women have been making technology. Is that what you say? I don't know, devising technology? Developing. Developing technology. I'm so glad you're here, Paul. Um, developing technologies, all sorts of different kinds. I guess it started with axes and hammers, but here mm -hmm. we are. We've got mm -hmm. technology. It's, um, it's more complicated and so on, but it's in and of itself neutral. Um, and we can, we can give thanks for technology and we can seek ways to use it to shape and steward uh, the world that God has given us in ways that would please mm. God. However, we also know from scripture that human hearts are not neutral. We have yeah. a tendency, a bias towards evil. We have sinful hearts and the combination of mm -hmm. a powerful technology and wayward human hearts um, is problematic. Uh, and so we want to think seriously about that. But I think just knowing that God knows that, God has devised his world, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God has got all the uh, wisdom and information that we need um, in his word to help us to tackle those things. Yes, I guess reminding ourselves that what the what the Bible sets out for salvation, but also for godliness, you know, that is always going to endure and be relevant yeah. 
know, advanced in technology, as you say, don't take God by surprise. And there's enough, you know, we have all that we need in the scriptures to be able to navigate yeah. all that comes. So, And God's ways are always good ways. Yeah. So we can always look there, yeah. find the help we need. Um, and I think we'd, we'd want as we as Christian parents, I think Christian parents, so I think we as Christian, a church family who've stood up and promised to uh, to stand with parents in, in all of these things. Mm. And we want to have a bigger aim than just harm prevention. Yes, yeah, so it's not just a sort of negative reactionary pushback. Yeah. Um, so it's, I mean, that's a key. How it's, can it's I key. keep my kids away from porn? I mean, I think yes. you should be considering that. Yes. But I think we want to do want to do more than that. Mm. We want, I think our aim should for parents should be that they would enable their kids to handle screen-based technology for the glory of God and for the good of others, that they would love the Lord their God and love their neighbour as themselves Yes. with this as well mm -hmm. as with everything else. Well, I guess it's, yeah, if, if, it, if you're only seeing it as harm prevention, then you're not going to be training your kids as they grow up, yeah. because at some point, you know, you want them by the age of about 16 to be able to manage themselves and... Um, so how are they going to get to that point? Yes. Um, where they can start to make decisions for themselves. Yeah. and Because you're not going to be able to avoid screens and technology, are you? Yeah. Um, but learning how to use them well yeah. is going to be key. Yeah. So you've been, so there's recognition of there's an issue here. How can we help parents think through this biblically? Um, what have been some of the key things you have in your reading and thinking? Um, which I know I'm very grateful for you doing that. If, you're, if your head's in that you, and what you're distilling is helpful, what will be some of the key things you've come across? What are those key lessons, I guess, you've begun yeah. to pick up? I mean, there's lots and lots, and there's, yeah. there are really good books. So for, for readers, there are good things to read. And we, we gave some parents who came to an earlier um, seminar this book, Raising Kids in a Screen-Saturated World, which is in the book room. And that's, as you can see, small. But I've read various other things. I, I think some themes come out. So like we were just saying, um, boundaries, setting boundaries for your family at various different stages of their development are essential. Um, like in every area of parenting, you will have a boundary mm. for the cooker mm -hmm. and you'll have boundaries for pavements. Um, and you need, we need to have boundaries um, for screens and devices. Um, and I think it's I think it's probably been helpful for our parents, those who've it's, it's been raised as a topic. I know that parents are talking about this a bit mm -hmm. to find out what others do. And I've been talking to some parents and that's been really helpful. But I think more than that is thinking deliberately, thinking about deliberate formation of character mm -hmm. so that our youngsters um, develop um, the character, the self-discipline and are aware of the issues um, so that they will, as you say, manage themselves um, in future and um, and want to be faithful to the Lord in the way that these they use um, screens and devices, mm. um, even though the world around them is uh, not not sharing that. Um, and I I think the thing I enjoy I've enjoyed most from reading these books is is thinking about the positive patterns. Mm. And so yeah. thinking about positive patterns for your household. Um, so not just the things that we want to say no to as a family, but also the things that you want to say no yes to as a family and have just have lots of yeses. Mm. Um, I've actually sat down with some of our parents and talked about the boundaries that they have in their homes and the positive patterns that they've either uh, developed or ended up with um, in this whole area. We had a plan before, I think even before Ivor was born, we, we talked about this and we thought about how much screen time we would expose them to and we basically came to the conclusion that limiting it to a couple of hours at the weekend um, was what we were going to start with. Uh, I had a colleague who'd done that and he said it was a great it was a great success. Um, his kids didn't pressure him through the week. They weren't pestering all the time. He wasn't having to say no to them all the time. They knew when they could get access to screens and, and that was the end of it. And to our shock it worked. Um, Ivor was never really that drawn to it. He would watch it if we put it on, but he was much more, I think, a child who would go and explore and learn and play. Um, we've stuck with the rules. Um, we couldn't change them um, when Angus was born. Um, 
and they have worked, I think. So so I think the big lesson there is have a plan. Hmm. Maybe we are being far too extreme um, and, and, and limiting it in the ways that we are. I don't think so. But I think as families, you need to come to uh, some kind of plan about what you're going to, uh, about how much screen time there will be, mm. and about what really your family life is going to revolve around. And um, for us, it's much more about, you know, spending time with one another, talking about the word, especially on a Sunday, um, and also service. Uh, so a, a lot of the time through the week, they're seeing us go out and do things, uh, you know, come into the church and serve in the various ways that we do. And that's important as well. And it wouldn't, I think, get the attention if everything revolved around TV and screens. I suppose specific boundaries, it's never alone time. So if they have their tablets out, it's always in a communal space. It's in the living room. It's with adults around. Um, we're in charge of whether they get it or not so they don't know the passwords they can't just go and get it turn it on and use it whatever way they want um, what else? we also put limits on what they have on their tablets yep. uh, so they have a certain selection of games that we know they like to play that so we can engage with them on it there's the Bible app for kids, which helps them go through Bible stories, and they really enjoy that, which is great. We haven't let our children use any social media, because that's not appropriate for their age while they're young. Social media will be a conversation that we will have to have at some point, but when that's age appropriate. And also they don't use their devices for looking stuff up on the internet on their own without us. The devices technically can, it's possible for that, but when they want to know something or look something up on the internet, that's something they come to us about and we show them how we do that and model that in some ways. So the limits are on what the tablets can be used for uh, and they have an understanding of that and they are not trying to push those boundaries and they seem generally happy to, to go with that, even though I'm sure what they can probably work out a lot of things that they could get away with if they could do it in secret. We're trying to monitor it and control it in that way. When we think about our children's device use, we're not just thinking about the amount of time they spend on that and putting limits on there. There's other considerations about the way they use those um, and what it's there for. Um, and I think it's really worthwhile considering um, how much your screen use, yours and your children's, is geared towards creativity versus consumption. Um, if you or your children are um, spending a lot of time on YouTube with one video then recommending another then recommending another which is often going down a bit of an echo chamber as well um, or for example if you're on social media or your children go towards social media there are clearly algorithms that are going to um, be influencing and they're scrolling and it's quite passive mm. um, and so um, there's quite a difference um, between that and using a device um, for really positive, great um, uses of technology, which we can really enjoy and feel blessed by. You know, as time goes on, there's more developed, um, which can still be really useful. So you might well be using apps where you're able to do kind of digital drawing or, um, you know, having children around at the house and playing the Nintendo Switch, which we have, and I don't think is a bad type of technology in itself, especially where there's a few kids on different controllers and they're playing together. Or for example, in Minecraft, um, they're creating worlds. Now, interestingly, um, and this could feel like it's uh, been, I've contrived or I've made this up, but I genuinely haven't. My child, one of my children, no, both, when I came into the lounge and they were playing Minecraft for a while one day, and I said, oh, what are you working on just now? Because recently they'd made a roller coaster. And they said, oh, we've been making Christianity World. And I said, <laughs> oh, what, what do you mean? Um, and so as they showed me, it was basically a church. They'd made a, a building that was essentially a church. Um, and so I was praising that as a great thing to have created. And then the other thing that developed out of that over the next few days, um, I would come into the kitchen. One of them would be sitting with the tablet um, rather than on the TV and he had his Bible open next to him and I said what are you doing and so he's gone into the Minecraft store and been able to add a book into this Christianity world to this church 
um, but he's found that you can actually go in and actually add words and type into the book. So you can, I guess it's more like a notepad he's added in. And so he literally had Exodus open and was typing bit by bit a few verses from Exodus um, it, so that he had a real kind of Bible in his Minecraft church. And that was very much not come up with by us. They just came up with that idea themselves. Which I think is a demonstration that actually um, technology in itself is neutral. Yes. All technology is neutral. Uh, God has given his world, his people, the, the, the ability to, to make technology, to manage the world that he's given them. But actually it, it's technology um, in contact with sinful human hearts we, mm. we, we need to be careful about because it, be, mm -hmm. it can be combustible and go the wrong directions. But the technology itself is, yes. is brilliant. Yes, yes. I mean, there, there are great things that we do with technology. The boys are both learning Spanish with me and, and that's like a really lovely thing to do. And so, I mean, it's not, it's not all bad. We use it for loads of things that, that help us. Um, and it's, again, it's nothing I want the boys to be scared of. You know, they need to know these things and we want them to be capable with them and use them sensibly. Um, but likewise, you know, if we can put the devices away, it's even lovelier to see them going out and playing together and, and doing stuff. And when they have their friends over, again, that's not a time that we would have devices. They would have loved seeing them with their friends using their imagination and just being kids, really. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to give them the alternative activities as well. So, you know, like, like Oliver at the moment is really into origami and that will keep him busy and entertained for just hours. Just these kind of, you know folding these into like various different animals and shapes and things and you know again it's, I think where there's, it's where there's a benefit of technology it's, it's like oh here's all these tutorials about how to do various things um, but ultimately you know again it's using it as a tool so that his so he's kind of learning how to do these things and you know getting that kind of you know, distraction away from it's not just about the screen it's actually about like learning how to do stuff and entertaining yourself other ways one of the things that we do um, to demonstrate positively what we can do instead of just going to a screen or spending all of our time on a screen is it's never our default. It's never the first point of entertainment or like I kind of said earlier, if Sophia ever comes to me and says, or Martha, I'm bored, I want to do something, they never get a tablet in response to that or a screen or let's just put on a film. That That's never the answer. Um, the answer is, well, let's find a book or you were drawing that picture the other day. Do you want to get that out? Or if I'm feeling really brave, let's go to the kitchen and get the paint out and do something messy. So, so I think... I don't ever want to only focus on the necessary negatives of you can't have this. It's we want you to have other things. We want you to read books and draw pictures and go outside and create a game with the two of you using your imagination. And they're good at those things if they're given the chance to do it. And I think it is like being relational is a really important part of that. So, you know, we made other decisions about the way our home works. So the boys' toys are not all in their own bedroom, they're in our living room, so that we have a, a hub in our home where we're all spending time together. And occasionally that does look like we're us all in the room doing different things, but actually, inevitably, that means we're engaging with one another. And um, that's the same way we've approached screen time as well. You know, there are times when the boys need to do homework on their own on a screen, unfortunately, for school. But um, if we're going to be doing something on a screen, ideally it is something that's relational that we're watching together and then going to talk about together or, you know, we're Skyping with family in the States. So screens are a part of our life, but the focus of what we're doing with them is not just to zone out from the people around us, but actually to enjoy those relationships better. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a really important thing to emphasize with our children that, you know, God designed us to be relational people. And so the choices we make in life should help us to do that well. And that includes screens. And we often find with our boys, like when they go to a grandma's house and they're allowed to watch TV for the whole day, and then they come home and inevitably they're grumpy, they're ratty with each other, they're ratty with us. And it's just such a difference when they're spending more time on a screen. Well, that's, that's lots of helpful nuggets and principles, I think. Um, any, anything else that uh, you've picked up that you want to... I, I think the other big theme mm. is talking 
with your kids um, mm. about um, about screens and devices. I think lots of people will be considering already when their kids will get certain things. Yeah. When they'll get a Kindle, when they'll mm -hmm. be allowed to do X, Y, and Z, when they'll get a phone, particularly when they'll get a phone. Yes. Um, and one of the one of the writers really helpfully said, um, "Don't think about the the when without thinking about the how and the why." Yeah. So how will we give mm -hmm. our kids? How will I give my, I don't know, secondary age kid a phone? Mm -hmm. What kind of phone? Doesn't need to be smart. Yeah. But um, when will I give it? But how will I give it? In other words, what conversations will we have mm. about um, what they're they're going to do? What dangers they're they, they yeah. could stray into what their mates will be doing, mm -hmm. um, the pros and cons, all those sorts of things. So just lots of lots of talk about it, which doesn't need to be okay. Today we are going to have the talk about screens, children. Yes. I mean, by all means, but um, <laughs> but just lots of lots of chat mm -hmm. from early on. Um, and actually, this this raising kids in a screen saturated world has got sort of conversation starters for different age groups mm -hmm. at the back. Oh, um, which uh, I guess you tuck one or two of those in your back pocket mm. and just think, oh, I'm going to look for a golden moment. Yep. And uh, just have, we can have a wee chat about what's the whatever it might mm -hmm. be. I mm -hmm. think that's I think that's really helpful. I think parents want their kids to be the experts on sex and on screens. That you're the guys they come to. Mm. That they know that you know. That yep. you've talked to them about it first. That when everybody else is saying one other thing, they're thinking. Mm. Mum and dad know, yeah, and also that yeah. when when stuff comes up, that you don't freak out. Mm -hmm. That they know that when they come and talk to you, they'll they'll have a sane, sensible, helpful conversation, yes. um, and so they'll keep coming to you. Yeah, they'll want to know what you think because they know that you know, yeah, that's and that you've given them good advice. Um, mm. So yeah, just lots of lots of chat about why do we do things as a family, and again, I think I mean I think our Christian worldview. Um, stands Christian parents in such good stead because we know and our kids should know we shouldn't expect to be like the world mm -hmm. so it's less of a shock to say our family is going to be different from other families you know everybody else has got one well it's never true anyway yeah. but as Christians we can say yes but but we belong to the Lord Jesus um, and it's going to be different mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. and um, lots of chat about why we do things the way that we do and um, and we've got good reasons. So, we've got good reasons, yeah. Um, we're not having to scramble around for answers because we're deliberate about what we do and um, maybe others aren't yep. so thought through. We serve a different um, master and he's a good master and his his ways are not enslavement, they're no, freedom. No, that's right. It's for our good and our flourishing. Mm. I think it's maybe Anne Benton. I don't know if it's in this book, but she talks about, you know, that's the, the unashamed, you know, for want of a better word, propaganda yeah. Well, you've got to indoctrinate your kids with, you know, why we do what we do with a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. But, you know, talking about what we do with screens and why we do it, and actually it's good. Yeah. Like I'm not, you're not losing out here. Um, there's really good reasons for this, and it's, yeah. you know. And you'll, you'll probably develop little things, little sayings you yeah. have. I used yeah. to say to, uh, I haven't said it for a while, but to TY on a Friday night, it's like, we're the ones who are having a good time on a Friday mm -hmm. night. You know that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Not the guys who are out at parties having having drinks or whatever. That's right. So I think yeah. being positive and on the front foot with that sort yeah. of thing and yeah. just reminding the kids why we do things the way we do. And as you have those conversations with your children, you're reinforcing the decisions that you've made as a couple mm -hmm. or made yourself if you're parenting by yourself about mm -hmm. what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. why I'm going to do it. And actually you're, you're preaching to yourself a yeah. little bit as yeah. well, aren't you? So the conversations that we've had generally with our older children, um, I think they're the ones that can bring up more things, influences from school or so-and-so does this and why do we not? So we will still look at what they would like us to request. They know then that we think about it and think if it's something that we think would be beneficial to them or not. And then we can go back and give an answer on that. Um, but it's always, we try and keep it like a conversation with them, that they can bring us things that they would like us to consider, but then they have to know that ultimately we'll do things with their best interests in mind. Yeah, I think we also have conversations just to 
explain to them that why we're trying to like why why we why we're saying no you know it's not just a no because dad says so as much as that's the easy answer but it's, it's explaining a little bit like well actually there's some there's dangerous things sometimes online there's things that you know we want to make sure that you know you are uh, it's, you know it's age appropriate and that you are mature enough to understand some things um you know so so you know some apps that you know we've heard about that We've said no. You're not having this because you know here's some things that you know either the school have recommended and said they actually you know and the school has been quite helpful to say here's some apps that actually we're hearing about that you need to be aware of as well that you know would be fairly again you would think fairly innocuous, and then um, you know the school will say well actually we've heard this this and this and um, we'll be like oh okay that's maybe something that we now need to be more kind of you know cautious about and relay really back to the boys and say. You know, here's why we don't think that this would be a good thing for you because here's the danger that could come from that, and here's the like kind of you know maybe slightly more adult themes that you know we we don't we don't think are appropriate for you at this time. One thing we have in mind is about educating our boys further about the influences that are there, especially when it comes to the internet, and um, that are not obvious to children until you teach them that things that we might know as adults. Um, and that they will need to know in order to navigate uh, an online world as they grow up. So can you give us an example of the sort of thing you mean? Yeah, so um, for example, um, sitting with the children and talking to them about YouTube. So when they're signed into their YouTube, which it does have parental controls on it, but just having parental controls on it isn't necessarily um, then enough to just let them free roam and use it as in, in whatever way they like. What I have done recently sat down with them and asked them to observe if you look through your the youtube on the tv and um the different options of videos it's suggesting to you what do you notice about those getting them to notice that ah okay there's very similar types of videos that are being recommended so for example silly prank videos or about um video game um creating minecraft worlds and other similar things and then talking to them about okay that is because there are algorithms and you can put that in more child-friendly language whatever you choose but there's um ways that the that youtube is suggesting content for you that is based on what you've watched already but it means that you're being limited in some of the other interesting things you could watch learn about explore and just and just letting them in on the fact that actually those technology companies mm. they don't have their best interests at heart mm. They've got YouTube's best interests at heart. Yes. Um, but yeah, you, as, I think, you as parents. Mm -hmm. you I think you can talk quite openly to them about how um, a technology company will want them to be engrossed for longer and longer. Yeah. But we know that that's not God's good plan for us as humans to be um, solely focused on one aspect of life and that it's um, good for us to have a variety of things in our life and especially to prioritize you know, relationships, the relationships within their family and relationships with their friends so that you know they've formed good bonds with others mm -hmm. and can then use that to be both an example of Christ with their friends but also share the gospel. Um, so, Yes, I think it's worth almost unearthing for children what is um, the reality of the way the internet and different apps are set up so that they can intelligently understand that and then um, make their own choices rather than just blindly being manipulated. We have had lots of good conversations with our kids regarding screen use and um, what we do, um, what our family decisions are. Um, I'm a big believer in talking to my kids about what we're doing and why. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not just here are the rules, but it's here are the rules and this is why the rules are in place. This is why what we as a family do what we do that looks differently from a lot of other families. And I do point that out. I say, you know, this, this friend that you have, they have their own thing and they use it all the time and that's not what you do um so we explain what we're doing why we're doing it um i think particularly as sophia has gotten older and um, those conversations have become much more about observing what's going on around her and showing her that that's not we what we want for her um so yeah i remember 
one night in particular, um, having a conversation with her because she asked out of the blue, mummy, what's the perfect age to get a smartphone? And I said, well, honestly, Sophia, I think the answer to that is when you're about 30 and you have your life sorted, you know what you're doing and, and it's use it for a phone. Um, but realistically, you will have something before that and we'll look at what that is. I think as Christians, we're very aware that, that people are pushing ideologies with things. Um, so even things that seem like, you know, fairly innocuous on Netflix, things that you're like, oh, that's just a harmless, like, kind of cartoon. Mm -hmm. You know, you see various ideologies come across in there. I think we stumbled upon one where one of the characters was transgender, for example. And you think, well, why does that need to be pushed at such a young age on children? Um, and I think, you know, having a kind of Christian perspective, you're not just going, well, I'll just let them have whatever cartoons. There's still an element of, we need to be aware of, you know, what things might be pushed. Um, you know, again, with, you know, YouTube, you know, similar, that we can't just have free for all on YouTube because you never know what the next video is that might pop up um, that will be pushing something. And even with, you know, YouTube, with some of the younger, or some of the recommendations they make for younger children, there's still things in there that's, you know, like pushing evolution as being a fact. Um, and, you know, a lot of things that are kind of, you know, counter counter God's truth and counter God's word. Um, and it, it, in some ways it's useful because then it does open up the opportunity for having a conversation with them to say, well, actually, you know, here's, you know, here's God's truth on this. So, you know, in some, in some respects, it's not always, you know, like saying, well, we're going to stop you from having access to anything but it's like what what's appropriate what do we think we can then actually say well you know okay that that, that video said this or this cartoon's like pushing this but you know here's god's truth on this yeah cause i think it, if they are watching something to, if we would tend to watch it with them so that it can then bring up a conversation so that you, we can then teach them actually you know this is what the Bible says, this is what the truth is. There's going to be so many voices and so many opinions that they're going to end up hearing, but we really need to arm them to be able to discern for themselves what's the truth, because when they're adults, we don't want them swayed by the, the next thing that they hear. They need to be like grounded in the truth and that we can be confident that we've done that for them. I think there's a lot of, we're very aware of the fact that like, it'd be easy to kind of just shelter them from everything but actually, it's not a case of if they're going to get exposed to things, it's always a case of when. Um, and so I think it's, you know, all these things are good opportunities for us as parents to you know, start training them up from a young age to discern, you know, what, what's, what's, what's the biblical truth here? What's the secret, you know, ideology that's being snuck in here? You know, wh where, where, what does God actually think about this? It is hard for them. Yeah. We are getting to the stage now where Ivor is beginning to feel as though he's being bullied and targeted because he doesn't have the access to technology that other kids do. And whilst that's hard for us to watch, there's no other way. The consequences of just bending to the peer pressure are just too grim, I think, mm. for us. And so whilst it was, having that conversation with them was difficult and, and, and painful. We had to just bring it back to this is the choice we've made as parents and here are the positive things that that choice has led to. Well, and we've talked like multiple times with Ivor about this because I think, yes, in some ways it's about the technology, but it's more than that. It's also about being a Christian and how as Christians, our lives will look different because we love the Lord and we follow his word. We will make choices in life that look different from other people. And so when it comes to this issue of screens, we've had the opportunity to talk with Ivor about, well, this is a practical way that this is lived out, right? We say no to certain things because we trust that what God says is, is true. And so when we say no to things he says are not good, and say yes to other things that he says are good, it, you know, inevitably other people may not understand. Mm -hmm. And um, that I think it's a, a, a little bit of a glimpse for him of beginning to understand that when I choose to follow the Lord, it will 
make a, you know, there's a real decision, there's a cost to that sometimes, and it will be difficult sometimes, but that if he wants to follow Jesus, he needs to take those things seriously and be willing to stand when others aren't doing certain things. Um, and that's a hard thing when they're, they're so young still, but we just have to keep praying that that will strengthen him as he grows older mm. to be able to stand firm in what God's word says, not just in the area of screens, but in every aspect mm. of life. I think one of the things as Christian parents we are mindful of is that we are the ones who are in charge of our children. We have been uh, called to, tasked with bringing them up in the Lord, teaching them how to behave in this world, how to serve their Lord and how they love neighbour and how they engage with the things that they see around them. So we're not just leaving it to the school to tell them how to behave online. We're not just leaving it to friends to show them pictures and apps and screens. Uh, we're not, as much as we love and, and appreciate the support of family and grandparents and others in the family, we're not trying to let that be the norm of how they approach screens. So we can let them have treats in screens and let them engage with their friends and what they're doing. But in the family home, we are saying this is the model of how we believe as Christians, we should use devices, we should engage with the world, we should uh, help each other to understand these things. Yeah, so we're in charge, but we're in charge in a way where actually we're trying to equip you and give you the skills you need to manage this yourself long term because technology is only going to become a bigger part of their life as they get older um, and so it would be really easy in this whole area to think oh screens are awful it's really hard nothing let's just batten down the hatches and do nothing but that bit like sweets hmm. that's not helpful because one day they will have unlimited access to whatever they want and I want them to know why mm. they are living the way they're living, what it is that ultimately is driving them. And so, yeah, we've got a much higher and bigger vision of what we do with our kids than many of the parents in school who actually, often it's, we're just muddling through the day. Um, and we often feel like we're just muddling through the day, but we're muddling through the day with that much bigger vision of we are bringing children up who we want to see them know and trust and serve the Lord. And this is just one area where that has to work out in practical terms. One of the other things about being a Christian that's been really helpful is that we are allowed to make mistakes and then admit those mistakes. We don't have to uh, knuckle down and say, well, this is the pattern we've set and we don't want to be seen to be fallible. No, we can say to our kids, this isn't working or, oh, daddy shouldn't have let you do that. I'm sorry. And show that what we're doing now is trying to turn to something that's positive and healing and better than what we've done before. So there's a, I mean, a few moments of that of having mm -hmm. to admit that I'm wrong, mostly. There's, and there's, um, there's grace. For parents, yeah. isn't there? Exactly. Yes, so one of the verses I found particularly helpful was Isaiah 40, verse 11, where um, he talks about how the Lord gently leads those with young, and the bit just before that as well, where he talks about how he carries the lambs. I, I remember when I was a, a new mom, um, the Lord had kind of brought me to that verse and, and it was really an encouragement to me because he talks about how the Lord gently leads those with young. And um, as a, especially a new parent, you know, the, the challenge of parenting, it seems overwhelming at times. And actually those verses in Isaiah remind us that we are not on our own in doing that, that actually the Lord is the one leading us in parenting our children. And I think that's a really important thing to remember that we're not expected to come up with all of the answers ourselves um, in our human wisdom, that we can trust that the Lord has our interests and our children's eternal interests at heart and he will give us wisdom and he will go before us in leading us. And um, the verse right of the part of the verse right before that, talking about how he carries the lambs, you know, and remembering, you know, as a mom, that's just so important for me to remember that the Lord loves my kids. And he loves you. And he loves me. And he wants to see us all, um, you know, safe in, his, in it, 
his eternal kingdom with him. And that's just such an encouragement, you know, that I'm not on my own figuring this out, that the Lord is with me and he's guiding us. So I, yeah, I find that really important to remember as a mom, because we do make mistakes, but God is gracious. Um, any other books to mention? Can yeah. You talk us through these books. Yeah, let me just talk you through these books. Um, so Raising Kids in a Screen Saturated World, um, short, uh, British. Um, that's a good read. Um, the Fruitful Home by Anne Benton. This is superb. Anne was my Sunday school teacher. And so look what that did. Well, don't look at me, but um, yeah, outstanding. This is really outstanding. So we send this to um, couples who are expecting a new baby mm. for the first time um, and would hope that folks would, would read that. This is, is really super. That, that reading this book made me appreciate my parents mm. all the more. And my parents were not intentional about things, really. I don't think. My mum said, yeah, anyway. But this made me appreciate my parents more. Um, the Tech Wise family, that's lots of the sort of pithy uh, car time, this conversation time came from this. Mm -hmm. And then this Habits of the Household has got a chapter um, on this whole area. It's called Screen Time, which is really super. It is very good. They talk about developing an immune system rather than just saying no. And I think that's brilliant. Um, this book, I think, is missing a chapter. Okay, what's the, what's the So the, the one habit of the household, which um, should be king of them all, is the habit of being in church with your church family mm, yeah. uh, when you, when as much as you can on a Sunday. Yeah. Um, which is a shame. I'm sure if you asked him, he would say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's focusing on... Yes. It's an unwritten assumption, maybe. It is, it is. But I think, read that book, but bear in mind that there's another chapter that's not been, that's not included yet. Good. Well, Agnes, thank you so much. That's, I found that really helpful um, because we're thinking about these things all the time yeah. as a family. Um, but no, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening in uh, to the special talking points. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.